Okay, I'm standing here with Matt from Criterion Games. Says he's a veteran here, but I don't think he's been through a war with this game. No, <laughs> Not quite. Feels like it might have been. <laughs> so, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. You're starting to get in on that final stretch towards home. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about it at, at this point? Really good, really happy actually. Uh, the game's changed a lot over, over the last, uh, last few months, and um, I think that we've really gotten, you know, the, as people are able to get their hands on, they know where we've got to on the handling and how good it looks and all the connected features that we're doing. So I think we're finishing really strong. And you sort of got center stage here in the EA <laughs> Coach. <-ship. laughs> yeah, it certainly looks like that. I think, you know, that's kind of how we roll, really. It's like, you know, okay, you want to show, you want to show online, so we need, we need eight. Well, eight would take a lot of room. Okay, we'll take six then. So, yeah, so we have six machines here and we want to get people in. It's the first time that we're... Um, we showed uh, Hot Pursuit, the game mode online. So you've got cop v racers. We're doing, we've been doing three on three um, cops versus racers in a Hot Pursuit. So that's the first time we've been showing that right here. What are the, the specifics of that mode? Well, it's real simple, right? Racers race and cops chase. So the racers have to get to the finishing line and the cops have got to stop them. So that would be great fun. And we know that's great fun um, because it's a Criterion game. So it's a lot of speed and there's a lot of impact. That's how you bust people. But we've added weapons and equipment into the uh, into the mix, so uh, cops are able to call in roadblocks to slow the racers down as a blockage, a barrier. Uh, they can use EMPs to uh, you know sort of mess with the car systems. They can drop spike strips to slow the racers down, and they can call in aerial support. But racers themselves have access to some equipment. They can um, they can do uh, EMPs and spikes. Uh, they can jam the cops from using their weapons and from, you know, if a helicopter's overhead, I can hit the jammer and he has to go away. Um, and they can use turbo, which is like a super boost of speed. So, racers have got to get to the finish. Cops have got to stop them. How it plays out is down to who's playing. You mentioned you wanted eight, you got six pods here. How many people will be able to play at the same time? Uh, we have, the maximum is eight. Um, and that's really for any more than that is a bit chaotic. Um, so eight is, is feels like it's a sweet spot, um, but it's the the configuration can be one cop seven racers or one racer and seven cops or it can be however you want. That's something that works with the, like the matchmaking. If you're really good at the game, will the will it put you in a in a greater challenge or? Oh no, well generally, I mean that's all down to the players um, uh, players playing. You know, we wanted to give the player a choice because what we find is. Some people, whilst some people really want to be a cop or really want to be a racer, there's times where they want to switch very easily as well. So, um, yeah, but people will be matched based on uh, based on their ranking. So yeah, we'll try and get you in with people that um, of, a, of a similar ranking uh, to you. So how do you balance that out if there could be one cop seven racer? Well, you know, um, it's down. That's you know, it's down to how it plays out. So, um, what's really interesting is. If there's, if there's, if does the cop work his way up through busting, you know, six, five, four, three, two to the first one, or does he go for the top first? But actually, it, it's you're always earning bounty. Everything that you do is progressing your career. So whilst you may, whilst you may lose the event, you've still earned a, earned a chunk of bounty. Uh, and also, you get, you know, with access to the weapons and stuff like that, will also mean that you're. Uh, you're going to be able to uh, put up quite a quite a challenge to those races. If we want to, you know, one thing that we do is um, favour the player. So let's give them the things that the options that we think that they're going to want, and certainly that's one of them. Okay, it's going to be tough. If you're a racer being chased by seven cops, you know it's going to be tough. But we figure people are going to be wanting to take that on, and it's all down to them. So they get they get to choose that pre-game. Um, of course, you've got all the VoIP. People can decide what 
no, I think I think things will naturally balance out, but there's going to be some times where people just think, hey, let's for the fun of it, let's go 7v1. And uh, I, I briefly mentioned auto log, which is which I think is uh, going to be the key feature uh, of the game online specifically. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about what what you want to see with that? Well, I th we made it because. We will say it's hard enough to get five friends to go down a pub together, let alone get online at the same time. And um, what we found in the past is that this, this asynchronous play is actually really powerful. And it's powerful for a couple of reasons. Number one is we don't have to be online at the same time to be able to play against each other. And number two, playing online in an online game is, is quite a scary place for someone who's new to it. I mean, I've, I've played a lot of games. It amazes me how, uh, when I get online now, how good people are, and uh, yeah, how brutal it can be. So well, I think that asynchronous play is really important to bring in new people into playing online games. Um, but connecting players together, you know, we've all got busy lives, we've all got limited game time uh, to us, but with Autolog I can play against my friends and not be directly connected. So um, that's really what we've, what we've developed, is that Autolog's tracking everything that you do and always constantly comparing it to your friends. And when there's a change, when there's an important comparison um, ch detail to change, we then broadcast that out directly into their game. So you could be just going through your cop career, every place where you're picking an event, you've always got how, you, how your friends have done in that event on Speedwall, a friends leaderboard, and like the latest news direct from a friend when they've done it. Um, so that is you're putting your friends at the heart of the game. But then we take it further with Autolog recommends. So in simple terms, when a friend beats me, Autolog is going to tell me about it. So it's constantly comparing through the, through the whole network and then sending out these personalized messages and recommendations. So if I beat you, you're going to get a recommendation saying, Matt's just beaten you. you know, go, 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 go take it back. We want to engender that social competition. And I could go directly to recommendations because if I've, got, if I've got 20 minutes worth of game time, I know that I can go there and just play what my friends have been doing and how my friends have been playing. So um, it just all stems, I think, from saying that friends are actually more important than, than strange or more powerful. I've, and we've got a context. So I know their face. I know their name. We're playing the same game. That's a really powerful sort of co competition. So let's bring that right up to the fore. All right, so you mentioned briefly the handling and stuff. Like, how would you compare the handling and, and this, the, the feel of the game towards uh, something like Burnout Paradise? Uh, it's very different, actually. Well, it's, it's different but the same. And, and, that, and that's an important thing. So it's, it, it's clearly, we've got real cars for the first time. So we've got a whole new uh, sort of physics simulation going on. Um, I mean, people might not know, but for even for a, for a game that has ac accessible arcade-type handling, there's actually we still actually do a, a huge amount of simulation work underneath. We just then put like the you know Criterion Magic on top because we want we want players to be able to feel like uh, drive, be able to drive the car like they think they can drive that car, um, and to have fun, you know, drift the car around the corner and have a big smile on your face and. But underneath it, there's actually, um, you know, all, we get all the real data from the car, uh, from the manufacturers, you know, all the torque curves and, you know, all the you know, dimensions of the vehicles and the power and how the gears are set out. Um, and we, we bunk all that stuff, we plug all that stuff in and, um, and then we play with how, how we want it to drive. So I think people will notice the difference, like, you know, some of the vehicles are certainly feel heavier. They've got, they're, I think people coming to it will feel a sense of, they will uh, be familiar with the handling. If they're, they're burnout fans, they'll be totally familiar. But it will feel very. It will feel. Oh, okay. This is this is interesting. So it'll be it'll be very familiar, but it'll be different for them. So you're gunning for a November date, I believe. That's right. Yeah. And confident you'll hit it. Yeah. Absolutely. That's good to know. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.